2005 was not only the turning point for the decade, but was also a pivotal moment for WWE as well. A new generation of top stars announced themselves to the world as John Cena and Batista both won world championships for the first time. Randy Orton was continuing his ascent to the top of the card and newcomer Bobby Lashley was just starting to make an impression. However, as the old saying goes, every silver lining has a cloud. For every big new idea that paid off in 2005, there were about seven others that flopped massively. Hulking giants were still being pushed way above their pay grade, and WWE still refused to get behind several stars the fans clearly wanted to succeed. Let's have a look, shall we? I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 worst WWE matches of 2005. Join us! Number 10. The Undertaker vs Heidenreich at Royal Rumble The Undertaker had been feuding with WWE's resident creepy poet for several months when they clashed at Royal Rumble 2005. Sorry, I misspoke there. I meant to say several months too many. Heidenreich started out looking bad against Taker and got no better as their feud stretched on. It all came to a head when the two faced each other in a casket match. Oh good, the match where the objective is to roll your opponent into a box. The action was sloppy as Heidenreich failed to convincingly sell most of what the dead man was throwing at him. It didn't help that he was saddled with a preposterous scared of caskets gimmick at the time. Very convenient, that. Honestly, it didn't work with Yokozuna in 1994, and it certainly didn't work here. Even run-ins from Kane and Snitsky couldn't help this waterfall of sewage as Taker mercifully closed the lid on Heidenreich and won the match. Even more mercifully, the planned Brothers of Destruction vs Heidenreich and Snitsky tag team match for WrestleMania never happened either. Forget a bullet, we all dodged a cannon ball on that one. Number 9. Hulk Hogan vs Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam The dream match between the Hulkster and HBK at SummerSlam 2005 is one of the most memorable matches of all time. To many, for all the wrong reasons. Allegedly sick of Hogan's backstage politicking taking away his future wins, Michaels threw a very public hissy fit at the Immortal One's expense. He oversold everything in this match with pantomime levels of acting, flopping around the ring like a fish on dry land. HBK's theatrics, plus the backstage reasons behind it, make this one of the funniest WWE matches of all time. And it's also one of the most cathartic, as Hogan is the one getting punked out for a change. Unfortunately, to some, this blatant unprofessionalism from the showstopper overshadowed what could have been a historic main event. Not to me though, I bloody love it. Worse doesn't necessarily mean not entertaining. Two of the greatest icons in the history of wrestling colliding for the first time ever soon became became little more than a meme in waiting. Yes, Hogan was a bellend for trying to weasel his way out of losing to Sean in the future, but was this really the most mature way to go about things? Then again, I'm not sure the word mature is something that either man has come across. Number 8. Kane vs Viscera at Backlash What motivates a man to fight? The love of his family? The desire to do the right thing? A chance to leave an imprint on history? Well, dear viewer, for Viscera at Backlash 2005, the answer was Trish Stratus in a skimpy outfit. Trish was in the corner of the world's largest love machine when he took on Kane, who was accompanied by his wife Lita. That's right, this was the whole forced marriage and pregnancy angle, also a genius piece of storytelling. Dodgy gimmicks aside, the two men had a very dull match that had no business being on Raw, let alone a pay-per-view. The most exciting part of the bout was when a chair-wielding Trish got smacked in the face by Lita and her crutch. Unfortunately for all involved, that was about as good as it got. Number 7. Orlando Jordan vs Heidenreich at Judgment Day We try not to focus too much on build-up in these countdowns because a poor storyline can unfairly reflect on a good end product. In this case though, the build was just too weird not to mention. After embarrassing himself against The Undertaker, Heidenreich inexplicably turned baby face after WrestleMania. Part of that character change involved making friends with audience members and reading them his <clears throat> delightful poems. This is exactly what happened at Judgment Day as Heidenreich chose a member of the crowd to sit at ringside for his match against Orlando Jordan for the US title. The young girl in question, whose name was Alex, must have been a plant because there is no way a normal 10 year old would be this excited to listen to a Heidenreich poem. With all that out the way, the two men wrestled a clunky match with zero heat to it, which ended with a DDT. 
A bad match with a bad build-up. This whole thing was a mess from top to bottom. We just hope that Alex is okay wherever she is, because if we had been forced to watch this up close at her age, we would all be having therapy for the rest of our lives. Number 6. Edge vs Matt Hardy at SummerSlam One of the biggest news stories of the entire year was the affair between Edge and Lita, and its fallout. Edge was married at the time, while Lita was in a high-profile relationship with fellow wrestler Matt Hardy, who made very public comments about the pair once knowledge of the infidelity became public. This resulted in Matt being fired from WWE, which in turn sparked huge controversy as fans believed that an innocent man had lost his job. The company actually listened to its audience for once and brought Matt back into the fold for an all-out war with Edge at SummerSlam. At least that's what we hoped would happen. In reality, the two brawled for a bit, then Edge busted Matt open on the ring post before the match was declared over after Hardy couldn't defend himself. This wasn't real by the way, it was all executed as planned. To say the end result of this match was disappointing would be a huge understatement. WWE left so much money on the table by not having these two duke it out in a proper match, sacrificing all that momentum to give Edge a tarnished victory in less than 5 minutes. Number 5. The Fulfill Your Fantasy Battle Royal at Taboo Tuesday Another year in WWE, another women in their underwear match on pay-per-view. Hooray! This time around, the WWE Universe had control over the fates of the company's most popular divas, or at least their clothes. The whole gimmick of Taboo Tuesday was that the fans could vote on certain match stipulations, and this time they could decide what the contestants in this Fulfill Your Fantasy Battle Royal would be wearing. The options were lingerie, cheerleader, or leather and lace. The winner was lingerie, and so Maria, Candice, Michelle, Ashley, Victoria, and Mickey James all came down to the ring in their underwear to take on Trish Stratus for her women's title. Props to this match for at least trying to have a storyline running throughout. This took place during Mickey's days as a Trish superfan, and her efforts to save her hero from elimination added an interesting wrinkle. Also, props to Trish and Victoria for doing their best to actually wrestle in this thing. All that to one side, this is still six grown women rolling around in their underwear for five minutes, and no amount of story can ever fix that. Number 4. Shelton Benjamin vs Maven at New Year's Revolution Heidenreich's poetry promo was weird and creepy, but at least it didn't happen after the bell had rung. At New Year's Revolution, former Tough Enough winner and scourge of The Undertaker Maven challenged Shelton Benjamin for the IC Championship. Well, sort of. After the bell rang, Maven kept rolling out of the ring and stalling. He then grabbed a microphone and started berating the Puerto Rican crowd for over three uninterrupted minutes. He told them to shut up, told them to speak English, he shouted so loudly into one fan's face that he blew out a microphone. It was pretty dire stuff, and in the middle of a championship match to boot. Eventually, Maven got so sick of the crowd that he walked out, only to change his mind and run back into the ring. He was then promptly rolled up and pinned by Benjamin. Whilst the promo was undeniably effective at drawing booze from the crowd, this was not the time or the place to do it. It killed the entire match to the point where it's hard to even count it as a match at all. Number 3. Trish Stratus vs Christy Hemi at WrestleMania 21 The 2004 Diva Search was WWE's attempt to find the next great female wrestling star. Participants were tested on their power, speed, agility, technical prowess. Just kidding, they cut cringy, flirty promos every week and rubbed pie on themselves, okay? The winner was 23 year old Christy Hemi, who fans may also remember from her TNA days. WWE pushed her straight away, putting her into a pro program with Trish Stratus for the Women's Championship at WrestleMania 21. Lita was even brought in on Christie's side as her kayfabe trainer. Unfortunately, the challenger looked like a deer in headlights and clearly lacked the experience needed at the time, failing to pull off even the most basic of spots with any sort of conviction. The whole thing was over and done with in just four minutes, with Trish walking away as the winner. As much as I just criticised her, none of this was Christie's fault. She was pushed way too high way too soon by the company, who were far more concerned with her looks than her in-ring ability. 
Number two, Theodore Long versus Eric Bischoff at Survivor Series. Some matches sound bad on paper, but are surprisingly good when the chips are down. Some matches sound bad on paper and are bad. Welcome to Eric Bischoff vs Theodore Teddy Long at Survivor Series 2005. The general managers of Raw and SmackDown respectively had been getting all up in each other's business leading up to the show for that most sacred of reasons, brand supremacy. This led to both men squaring off in an actual honest to god match. Now might be a good time to remind you that neither are actual wrestlers and their combined age at the time was 108. What followed was five agonizing minutes of long shuffling out of Bischoff's way, hitting him with his shoe, and then being distracted by Palmer uh -huh. Cannon? Who? Uh -huh. Things somehow got even worse when the damn boogeyman showed up to attack Easy e allowing Teddy to slowly crawl over and make the cover. Bad idea, bad execution, bad everything. This match stunk to high heaven. But at least we didn't have to look at anyone's backside. Number one, Akabono versus Big Show at WrestleMania 21. On the same show where Randy Orton nearly beat the streak, Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle had a classic, and John Cena and Batista took their places as the future of WWE, Big Show got his entire ass out to lose a fake sumo match. Akabono, who, fun fact, once fought Brock Lesnar for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, was a huge star in the world of sumo, so his appearance at WrestleMania 21 was actually a big deal, if you liked sumo wrestling, which it seems nobody in the audience did. WWE tried their best to present the match as authentically as possible, but all it did was grind the show to a screeching halt. And then came the actual bout itself, 60 seconds of pretend fumbling around until Akabono chucked Big Show right out of the ring. Not only was this entire segment clunky and uninteresting, but it didn't even build to anything exciting. Akabono won it, and that was that. No follow-up, no big angle, nothing. Despite their best intentions, WWE just wasted time on the biggest show of the year by pushing something nobody wanted to see. And we're not talking about Big Show's bum cheeks. Or am I?